joining us. Um, just before we start, um, got some web guidance. Um, so, uh, thank you very much for joining us on this System Centre Operations Manager webcast. My name is Richard Blackburn. I'm an account manager working in our commercial sector team. Uh, on, the, on the webcast we have uh, presenting today, we have Damien Scheel, who's one of our cloud infrastructure consultants. And also we've got Molly Sutton, who's our uh, marketing apprentice, and Rob Meehan, um, our, our marketing analyst. Um, please submit your questions uh, via the uh, IM window if, if you're online. Um, if not, um, if you, and you dialed in, please submit your requests um, by email to inquiries at visual.com and uh, Molly will pick those up and either read them out of the Q&A or, or uh, paste them into the iron window for us to, to answer. Um, all phones have been muted uh, from the presentation. However, we will unmute the, the, um, all the attendees uh, at the, during the Q&A session. So if, if you could keep, um, keep your phones muted when you're not talking, that'd be great because we'd like to keep background noise to a minimum um, just to make it easy for everyone. Um, the webcast is being recorded um, and it will be published on our YouTube channel um, and, and the links to that will be sent out afterwards. So if you would like to share it with anyone who you think it would be uh, of interest to or valuable to, then please, please do that. Um, so. Okay. Who are visual? Um, basically, Visual is a pure play uh, Microsoft Gold partner, um, and some of you may already be working with us, so you already know how brilliant we are, or some of you have heard about how great we are from other, other customers, uh, or Microsoft, in fact. Um, for those of you who have never heard of Visual, we're basically the best small business you've never heard of. Um, and essentially, as I said, we are a pure play Microsoft Gold partner. Uh, what, what does that mean to you? Well, importantly, Visual is unique in the Microsoft partner community in that we've only ever promoted and implemented Microsoft solutions or solutions developed by Microsoft partners designed and optimized for Microsoft technology. Now, this means that we're um, a customer centric in that we're not driven by the latest margin busting deals from third parties um, and we're solely um, interested in helping our customers leverage value out of their in, their investments in Microsoft technology, whether they're about to invest, whether they've already invested, um, and, and that's something that's that's unique about us. So we've demonstrated this uh, uh, um, because in the last ten years that we've been going, we've 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 only ever um, we've never once sold a competitive product, um, which has also uh, enters a very unique position with Microsoft, as they know that we're, we're a safe pair of hands. Um, in that we're not going to, you know, if they give us an inquiry for some BI, for example, we're not going to start selling ClickView, for example, uh, which is a recent example. Um, uh, furthermore, we've we've very very strong relationships with uh, with Microsoft, uh, and this and this is at every level, um, so all the way up from, you know, specialist in sales to account teams, all the way up to the senior leadership team, um, and and even uh, last week at World Partner Conference, one of our directors. Had breakfast with the uh, with Satya, so you know just just to give an idea of of, of, of um, how close our relationship is. Um, so one th one one thing that is 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 um, critical is that we're a tier one Microsoft platform partner, and and that means that, well in the UK there's only 25 of them, but what's what's unusual about Visual is that not only are we a tier one um, managed platform partner, we're also tier one. We have tier one status across almost all of the workloads. So that demonstrates that we have, we've qualified uh, technically. So you can be confident we've got the technical expertise, but it also means that um, we have the breadth of skills across the entire Microsoft stack to help, help customers deliver um, and adopt Microsoft technologies at scale and actually transform their businesses in the process. So that's something that not many partners can do because they're generally very good at one particular thing, where we are very good at across the entire stack. Uh, and it's actually easier to, to, to 
to specify the Microsoft technologies that we're, we're not very good at um, or we don't play in the space of, and that is Microsoft Dynamics, AX, GP, and NAV. So those, those are the three products we're not involved with at the moment. And that's not to say we haven't got plans for, for going into that. Um, so so um, what does that mean to you? Well, um, it's a, you know, obviously we've got the, we can demonstrate deep expertise in each area of technology, um, but it also means that those statuses that we, we, um, we have attained um, mean that we can tap into any promotional funding that Microsoft may have. So, for example, this year they're really keen on, on Windows 10, for example, and there are you know, various funding pots that are available that we can potentially dip into to help customers try out these technologies. And, and that, that goes across all of, all of the technology stacks. So when they become available, we can tap into them, which is really useful, you know, really, really useful because, you know, to, to prove concepts or get pilots up running and try out innovations, we can, we can do all that for you, um, which is key. So um, another really important point is Rizual recently won UK Partner of the Year, um, which is an achievement we're immensely proud of. And it's been something we've, been, we've all been working towards for the past 10 years. Um, and, I, and I now know that uh, Rizual's next ambition is to become global part of the year, which um, I expect won't take so, so long. So how, how have we achieved that? So when we move on to the next slide, this, this is a, a slide we show all of our customers, and it's, it, it demonstrates our business quite clearly. And our business, in terms of delivery of professional services, is split in two. So we, we are responsible, basically, for selling time and people. Uh, just in different different measures and um, on the left hand side um, we have our consulting business and the right right arm is our services business so um, if we just focus on the left hand side for a moment the that split into two arms as well so we have on the left hand side our business group practice now this is where all our strategic consultants live so our enterprise architects, our engagement managers, our internal project managers, our project managers all work out of our business group. And these guys are the ones that are responsible for helping build the vision and scope of business transformation. Now, they work very, very closely with the technical group practice, which is the one on the right hand side. Um, now, the technical practices there, business productivity, UCM messaging, cloud infrastructure and application development, they are treated like businesses in their own right and they compete with with partners who focus on those areas um, solely so our business productivity practice is made up of a number of um, consultants business productivity consultants who are very good at delivering um, propositions like uh, collaborative workforce uh, enterprise social and uh, internet evolution which relate to sharepoint and yammer and, and business intelligence um, our UC and messaging practice has a number of consultants who've got um, deep uh, subject matter expertise in Exchange and Skype for Business, and we're actually are responsible for delivering over half a million seats of Exchange and half a million seats of um, Link and Skype for Business, with over 200,000 of those uh, being enterprise voice on a, a global scale as well, over hundreds of countries. Um, the third practice is cloud infrastructure. This was renamed this year. It was, recent, it was merged out of two previous practices with system management and identity access and perimeter. That's our largest practice and that's where all of our um, cloud infrastructure consultants live, Damien being one of them. Um, and they do have, deliver everything from the desktop to the data center to Azure and everything in between. Um, and then our, our newest practice is our application development. And, and this uh, was in, in incubation last year and was launched in January. And th there's a, a team there of, of, um, of consultants and developers who deliver everything from CRM applications through to bespoke applications. Um, and actually, we've actually, uh, they've developed um, a universal application called Room 365, um, which we're selling um, to all of our customers, which, which makes use of Office 365 services um, Azure and um, SharePoint Online. Um, so th basically, th those two practices are working together to deliver professional services in terms of projects and programs and business transformation. On the right-hand side, we have a services business, which is 
uh, basically working out of our support office, um, which is dedicated in, in Stafford. And we do everything from first line through to fourth line support across almost all of the Microsoft technology. Um, and we've got examples of customers who are now signing seven figure contracts with us to do completely outsource all of their services. Um, and you know, we've got a very modern uh, approach to that. And we've even got a service desk model now that covers all of the technologies, which is very, very adaptable, very flexible and agile. Okay, so just to finish off, basically, we have um, three propositions uh, we go to and talk to all of our customers about. Uh, and this, these are the business transformation propositions. Um, so we believe IT is at the heart of positive change. And the way, what we're, what we're doing with our customers is that we're helping them uh, to either engage with their customers, citizens or clients, we're helping them to empower their workforce, or we're helping them to enhance their IT operations. So from left to right, the, the engagement um, model is um, connected business. And now these are being tailored per, per vertical as well. So you know, we're working across public sector and commercial sectors, and we're tailoring these propositions and, and solutions accordingly. But essentially, connected business is, is how we help to transform the way in which our customers engage with their, their customers or clients or citizens. Um, and we've got some great examples of that, um, which I haven't got time to go through today, but more than, more than happy to go through some at a later date. Um, end user computing is on the middle there, and that's really how we empower the workforce. And this is basically how we help boost productivity by delivering modern uh, devices uh, so people can start enjoying flexible work styles. Um, and how it answers the questions of how we mobilize the workforce, how we do that securely, and how we manage that uh, without increasing overheads, which is you know, a challenge. But we've got some great, great examples of that. Uh, and, and not only does it do that and be a massive boost, it also can increase operational efficiency as well. And we've got some excellent examples of that. Um, on the right-hand side, we've got optimized service vision. And this is the proposition, this is the strategy that we generally talk to IT people about. So this is how we help enhance the customer's IT operations by helping to identify um, the most appropriate, most efficient delivery models for all of the business applications. And we've got some absolutely outstanding examples of that um, with both commercial and public sector customers um, where we have, we're helping them to meet their business objectives um, in, in line with their strategies. So that's us in a very, very high level of, of what we talk to our customers about. Um, and we, you know, we, we've got a number of transformational programs going on at any on time. Of course, we also do the tactical work as well, the stuff that just needs to be done. But this is what we promote to all of our customers, um, and that makes us different as well. You know, there's there's not many partners out there. I don't think there's any partners out there that have got the breadth to be able to help our customers, or Microsoft's customers, exploit all latest technology and drive innovation in this way. So now I'm going to hand over to uh, Damien Scheel. He's going to give an overview and a demonstration of Operations Manager. So Damien, would you like to say hello? Right. Hello. Thank you very much, Richard, for that introduction. Um, uh, my name is Damien Scheel. I've been a System Center uh, um, Operations Manager uh, Specialist um, within the Cloud Infrastructure team for the last six months. Um, also have specialities in operations, uh, uh, service manager and orchestrator, uh, PowerShell and sort of general uh, uh, service stuff. So I'd like to um, take over first of all. I think. Uh, uh, that's that's my introduction, and thank you very much to uh, all the the other uh, guys from Rizual for uh, setting this um, webcast up. Um, really, the first thing is uh, op uh, an overview of what Operations Manager is. It's part of the System Center suite, and therefore it's licensed within in that um, uh, within that bundle. Uh, on a standard and uh, virtualized nature, very much like the, the OS um, is nowadays. Um, it's also known as uh, uh, Operations Manager, Ops Manager, SCOM, uh, or its full title, System Center Operations Manager. We're currently at 2012 
R2 update rollup six um, in its um, uh, in its uh, version history, and uh, looking forward to uh, the the enhancements uh, uh, when Vnext rolls around. So, what is Operations Manager? It's basically it provides extensible monitoring for, across the majority of your enterprise and data center platforms. So, it's not just restricted to Windows machines as it was. Um, uh, uh, back uh, in the MOM 2005 days. We, out of the box, it's able to monitor uh, Unix and Linux enterprise distributions such as Debian, CentOS, Ubuntu, Solaris, I, I, IBM AX. Um, it's got uh, visibility, again, straight out of the box of network devices, so switches and routers, firewalls and load balancers. Um, anything, basically, you can hit with a, via an SNMP or a ping, you can get uh, uh, monitoring on a, on a, on a, a simple basis. Um, you're also, with the buy-in and, and um, uh, vendor buy-in of the third parties, such as NetApp and HP, 3PAR, IBM, uh, you can start to bring in monitoring, enterprise monitoring for um, uh, your storage area network solutions. And so, as you can probably see, that we then get a much more uh, rich and colorful picture of our data center. And it's not just, as I say, restricted to the Windows operating systems. You're looking at virtualization hosts. Um, you can even bring in VMware uh, through third-party management packs provided by Veeam and other providers, um, and really get an idea of the host in within your uh, data center, your application servers, your uh, hardware specifically, and your network devices, which all bring together what is everyone knows as your data center. Um, quick on the application monitoring, its uh, operations manager is particularly good at looking at the application uh, stack within the guest uh, OS or the, the, the physical OS, and particularly it's very good at Exchange, Active Directory, SharePoint, Link 2013, and Skype for Business 2015, and all the core fundamentals that you would expect from a, an enterprise monitoring solution such as SQL and IIS. Um, again, the third-party uh, involvement does require their, their, um, their buy-in. Though this machine-specific monitoring is great and, and is at the level of detail that most technical teams require, but Ops Manager is a mile wide and a mile deep, which can be great and can be problematic. So Microsoft is moving away from this intention to the machine-centric approach, as, as it is with other services such as SCCM. and then moving towards service-centric. So it's that logical grouping together and reporting on the availability of the application machines and servers and devices and hosts that actually define your line of business applications that um, you are responsible to providing to your business. And it's that Def it gives you that visibility and a definable method of quantifying the SLAs for for those businesses that you uh, those services that you um, uh, supply to the business. And this is where Damien, Damien, Damien can yeah. I just step in one second? Yes. Um, you, you, I don't think you're presenting at the moment. Do you want to just make sure you're taking over as presenter? And, oh, right. Uh, sorry. Yeah, there you there go. You go. I can do operations now. manager, there but uh, there we go. Brilliant. There we go. Is that better? Sorry about that, guys. Right. Okay. So. Um, yeah, this is where distributed applications uh, come into play, but I'll, I'll circle back to that later. Um, we've got a single management console, um, and this comes from Microsoft's uh, uh, terminology of a single pane of glass. And this, through the console, it provides that platform to accomplish a lot of the everyday tasks that you'd normally have to log on to the, um, uh, a server and then perform that ton task. Let me just um, flick over to the console so we can see what we're talking about. I don't know, Rich, if you can just give me uh, an idea when you can see my screen so just I don't start now, talking yeah. about it. Okay, so I can see Excellent. it. Excellent. Excellent. OK, so you're looking at the uh, the landing page for the Operations Manager console. I'm sitting on a lab server currently at the moment. So apologies if sometimes things are a little bit slow. I can't afford SSD on my, uh, my home lab. <laughs> so um, if we have a look at uh, Windows computers here, we can see all the, the virtual servers and the, the physical hosts that I've got sitting in my system. And you see on this right here that we can open up um, all these tasks. So I can go straight to an embedded PowerShell. Maybe not on that one. Maybe I'll go to host 
to. Let's have a look at that. So I can open up a, a, a PS session directly into the machine without having to log on to it, which is quite cool. Um, if I want to see uh, exactly what processors are running on that box, normally you'd have to, to log on to that box um, and then list those processes, you know, go to Task Manager. There we go. I've done it in in under two, two or three clicks directly from the console. Um, you get a little bit more granular for your SQL guys and your DB team. They don't need to go to um, uh, the uh, the specific engines anymore. What they can do to open up their SQL management studio straight from the uh, uh, straight from the console. So you can see, yes, I'm not saving thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, but I'm saving minutes here, minutes there, and those add up. Um, straight through to uh, five minutes here, ten minutes there, um, and over a week, uh, a month, a year, that will actually start saving your technical team quite a lot of time. Right, I'm going to flick back to the slide now. Okay, so, uh, right, okay, so, um, dun -dun -dun -dun, just trying to get back onto that. So if I go... You're still on, you're still just... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. Right, okay, I'm going to flick. Yeah, here we go. Flick back onto the... There we go. Lovely. Look at that. Right, okay. So as you can see, it's, it's going to provide time savings for your technical teams. But it will also do is give you performance and availability monitoring. Um, and at that core of the heart, what the operations manager is there is to, to monitor your estate and in terms of availability of the estate at any one point of time and then in trend analysis of performance over the last week, over the last month, over the year, last year or just the last hour to, to identify where spikes in your performance have been. Um, and you can capture any performance metric that, that is capable of being monitored via a Windows or Unix machine. That can be turned on for your specific scenario and captured and then reported on as long as the business requires. Um, and at the heart of this is root cause analysis, which is really where the source of the problem can be identified immediately and then potential resolutions are highlighted and presented. I'll go through that in a second when we go to uh, do another demo. Um, and you can see that you can drill straight down into the problem and give you an idea of what's actually causing that. But what that doesn't do is, is tell you what it's potentially impacting and that's so root cause analysis we call passive monitoring the other side of it is active monitoring so what do I mean by that um, take for example a website it might be up and running on the network all the services according to uh, Windows are running correctly and not reporting any er errors that's the passive monitoring bit the root cause analysis but let's say there's a .NET application working on it which might not work and here, according to Windows, is everything OK, but the customers or your users are reporting problems. So the solution to that is a, a meshing of active and passive. And that's an active monitor going in every 10 minutes and checking that the web page is up as possible. And between those two methods of it, um, uh, of monitoring, then that gives us all the, the, the monitoring that we need for that. OK, so I'm going to slip back over very quickly now into uh, my uh, my desktop. So hopefully we should see. Rich, if you can just give me an idea when that's loaded up. That just would be great. loading at the moment. It's just loading. So I can see it now. Lovely. Brilliant. Now, in the best possible um, Blue Peter fashion, these are two I prepared earlier. Um, and so we can see that these are testing for external website. And we can see down here, I don't know if you can see this down here, all the blurb down here, it's telling me that it's trying to look at Microsoft.com and it's doing all these tests. Well, that's lovely, but I don't know about you guys, but I like to actually see visual visual identification. Now that's better look. Okay, so straight out of the box, we're looking at transaction timeout to, I mean, I've used Microsoft.com as an example here. But this could be an internal site. It could be an external site that you guys are responsible for or anything. And we can see that the time to last byte, the total transaction time, DNS resolution time, lots and lots of information straight out of the, um, uh, out of the, um, out of the functionality out of the box. OK, so I'm going to bring that down again. See, so yeah, I'm getting, getting used to this switching between content. Hey, Rich, I'm telling you. 
Right. Okay. So as with any other um, enterprise method, um, there are many ways that we can be uh, alerted to these notifications. So your guys aren't going to be glued to the console waiting for things to happen. We can use uh, traditional email, SMS. Um, we can do a command prompt and, and bung a file on a file share somewhere that gets picked up by, you know, the, another messaging system. Um, or we can use, you know, IM such as Skype for Business and or Link 2013 uh, for that kind of um, integration and alerting of your technical teams. So enterprise class monitoring, what do we mean um, by that? Uh, enterprise scale, that as you ex expect from Microsoft, they don't do things small. Um, but operations manager scales from the smallest environments of a dozen machines, say, to a multi-forest, multi-site enterprise and with thousands of servers spanned across multiple data centers. Um, so I'll give you a tiny bit of terminology, uh, which is management group. And this is that simply uh, Microsoft's definition of a management group is one or more management servers attached to an operations database in a data warehouse. And that's it. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about a management group. From that point, with those components in place, you can uh, uh, you can potentially manage up to 3,000 servers. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. The numbers are quite astonishing as well you can you can actually monitor 6,000 um, uh, machines per management group if you've got 50 people having to uh, administer it all the time or if you've only got 25 concurrent connections you can up monitor up to 15,000 um, uh, uh, agents uh, with a single management group you're not so your scale's not going to be an issue. Um, and if you need to go higher than that, you can have multiple management groups. Um, the, the other reason that you might have multiple management groups might not be scale. It might be down to geopolitical reasons, where you have two teams of administrators that maybe don't trust each other, or there is no trust in place, um, and where you need a full administration given to each set of people without um, uh, uh, stepping on the, uh, the other boundary limit. So um, you can monitor lots of different URLs, as you saw in the in the demo there with the web. You can actually um, uh, monitor up to, I think it's 12,000 of those URLs, um, and then 3,000 per a dedicated management server. Um, with the other thing that I didn't actually mention I was, uh, with the, the monitoring of the applications is that if you've got technical teams in place as well, um, uh, that uh, look at the .NET and the developing house. Uh, Microsoft actually incorporated the Avicode agent into uh, the, the, the Microsoft agent. And this was formerly £1,000 uh, agent per box. Um, and so it will probably get your .NET developers quite excited, as you can then provide them with code level um, diagnosis of your applications, .NET applications in your environment. Monitor it from both the server and the client side, which shows any potential areas of, of, of lag or, uh, uh, or uh, attention that they need to go back to their developing board. And of course, Enterprise Solution also integrates with Team Foundation Server if you've got a big, big development shop and, and in with their workflows as well. Um, so the the number of network devices that you can actually have as well uh, per management group is up to 2,000. Um, the, the management servers themselves uh, need to be relatively beefy because everything's held in memory. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty robust situation. And uh, uh, the network monitoring that's being um, provided by um, operations manager, or SCOM, SCOM as I, I, I uh, lovingly call it, um, is is getting better and better and more rich every every update release becomes more stable and uh, the the amount of information that's uh, getting back is is much much more relevant so in terms of resilience making uh, operations manager as you'd come to expect with any uh, uh, enterprise solution that is, is required for core functionality of the business we've got to make it um, highly available Thank goodness, um, uh, from 2007 R2, it was possible, but it was quite a big headache because they, in 2012, they introduced something called resource pools. And without going into massive technical detail, uh, what it allowed it to do is you just introduce a second management server into your management group, 
and you've got high availability at the application layer so which is is pretty cool and that's all taken care of for yourself the 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 application itself work uh, balances the uh, the 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 workflows uh, in between and so manages that uh, high availability for you um, so but as with the majority of um, enterprise Microsoft applications it's a data-driven product and therefore it relies on a solid SQL platform and so as per update rollup 5 of uh, operations manager 2012 r2 it's now fully compatible and uh, um, supported with sql 2014 um, and it's able to work with the latest uh, always on availability groups or log shipping and mirroring, mirroring to provide that level of sql high availability from possibly what you've already got in your shop um, uh, or to provide that that rock solid platform so and in 99 percent of the times uh, slow console perform performance in operations manager which is possibly something that you've heard and been put off is down to poor SQL um, uh, latency between the management servers and that SQL solution so it's really important to get that SQL solution absolutely right and as quick as possible and you'll have a, a, a monitoring console that's as uh, quick and dandy as you like so um, as I say, yeah, so if you span those uh, resource pools against data centers and um, uh, the SQL solution, the highly available SQL solution over multiple data centers, so long as you've got um, uh, good latency between those data centers, then you have a robust and a highly available uh, monitoring solution that is resilient at machine level and then also at uh, uh, location level as well. So. Um, in terms of integration into the rest of uh, the enterprise, um, as I touched on briefly in the beginning, it, it can effectively monitor all of your devices within the data center. I mean, that even goes to your environmental control box, which is possibly a, an SNMP device or it's got SNMP. Whether you have access to that or not or, or is, is another matter. Um, but uh, if you've got an SNMP community string and the rights to, to look at that, you can start getting uh, information straight back from that. That's what we would classes custom monitoring which I'll touch on in a little while um, but uh, it is certainly possible and that effectively what operations manager is it's a framework um, and each layer of complexity and functionality is is um, brought in with um, uh, the, the management packs from um, from Microsoft vendors and uh, and other sorry Microsoft and and other vendors so the agents that can be monitored out of the box uh, are Wintel or Windows servers and that goes with a backward compatibility right back to Windows 2003 Service Pack 2 um, and as I said various distributions uh, enterprise distributions of Unix and Linux so that would be uh, CentOS, uh, Solaris, IBM, AIX, uh, 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 Ubuntu and, and all of these um, uh, uh, Linux distributions that that you would use within the enterprise um, and if we have vendor buy-in from the manufacturer we can get to very very granular detail so for instance the HP uh, ProLiant management pack will bring back all their HP Insight agent details back into SCOM so we go back to that idea of a central pane of glass a single pane of glass where yes the information might be available in other areas but it brings it to the analyst in one place so um, um, that analyst and effectively for, for reporting purposes later on does not have to go to various sources to grab the information all of it is in there in one place so again network monitoring as I said it, it was really revamped from 2007 R2 to 2012 they they rewrote the code base they brought in some guys from XS and MP um, and they did a brilliant job and really really uh, brought to the game um, uh, enhanced network monitoring so going beyond just um, packet analysis and drop packets uh, we're looking at vendor specific so specifically Cisco um, and Juniper and uh, etc devices there's a there's a, a, a good TechNet uh, Excel spreadsheet which details everything that's uh, supported for this enhanced monitoring and that goes into ideas for the hardware on the network device as well so CPU um, uh, memory fans etc which is really quite a level of detail which would normally take quite a long time to to craft if you were doing it by yourself so and when I when I looked after um, 
SCOM in my own environment uh, for working previously for a public sector uh, organization. The one team that I had greatest fun in, in uh, uh, convincing to use SCOM was, was the network team. Um, and that is, I think, because they're so used to the rich reporting, uh, so the, the rich detail that their, their, their Cisco tools and other mon uh, uh, manufacturers uh, uh, can provide. But a lot of network admins won't necessarily see that benefit in their devices because it doesn't give the same functionality as, say, those Cisco tools. But I would say to you, if you're trying to sell it to them, that is not what it is designed to do. It's designed to bring in that IP layer of information um, uh, into your distributed applications and the services that you offer. So again, you're just bringing that information into one place. Um, it is just there to monitor the availability and provide trend analysis of those common statistics um, over that last period, so up to a year, two years, however long you've defined your reporting period. Um, tell me, can Cisco tool do that? No, but then again, that's not what they are designed to do. They're designed to give you in-depth information about um, packet, uh, you know, uh, analysis of packets over the wire, etc. So, so if we just touch on virtualization again with the enterprise, it's almost a stand now. It's almost the exception that uh, new servers will be provisioned on physical kit. I mean, there are obviously other cases, but uh, as you can imagine, there is tight integration and monitoring of Hyper-V. You bring in System Center Virtual Machine Manager and Ops Manager into the ball and then uh, bring that. But what if you're a VMware shop? Well. Uh, there's management pack solutions from providers such as Veeam, there are others as well, um, for VMware that allows that direct and rich monitoring of, of those VMware hosts. Um, it's a very, very good solution, but obviously there is a dollar cost associated with that. So moving out of there, operations manager doesn't just look at that machine-centric level monitoring and the operating system. That's sort of almost a given. So your memory, your CPU, your network, your disks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What operations manager absolutely screams from the hills about is that it looks at the application layer, and um, each of the Microsoft product teams have a have a mandate to update their management packs in line with the the, the update rollups, um, and specifically the teams that um, align very very carefully to it are the the, the Skype for Business team and and previously Link 2013, and um, the monitoring between there is absolutely amazing. Um, you can bring in synthetic transaction watcher nodes, you can bring in monitoring for your, your client's smart rooms, et cetera, et cetera, and really get a, an idea of how the system is performing, and also then again analysis over the, all the performance metrics that you need for Link, and there are quite a few. I know our UC consultants um, often are uh, talking to me about that. Again, Exchange 2013 and Office 365, Active Directory, Directory Services, Certificate Services, um, file, uh, uh, Federation Services, and of course SharePoint. So tightly linked to Azure, uh, there's uh, more and more um, functionality coming in from uh, 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 Azure in terms of outward looking in, such as Global Service Monitor, which adds another element of uh, resilience to the monitoring of your website. So if you have a, a website that needs to be internationally uh, monitored from, uh, uh, you know, from Europe or, or, or Asia or uh, America, um, that transactional monitoring and that synthetic test, which is the active monitoring, as we discussed earlier, um, uh, can be done from any of the Azure data centers, and that can all be leveraged within your existing uh, um, SA agreements with, with Microsoft. So if I now click over to, oops, sorry, my mouse has gone to sleep. So custom monitoring. Um, as, as with everything, there are, um, say if you buy a hamster, you normally um, uh, buy the cage and you buy the bedding and you buy the food and you buy the toys and you buy everything and then you end up giving the um, hamster for free. This is very much like the same with distributed applications um, in terms of SCOM. They are incredibly powerful and once everything is actually monitored within um, uh, with, within Operations Manager, it's a relatively simple operation to create that distributed application. Um, 
And then once you've created that single point, it will become more clear. I'll give you a demo in a second. Um, you can then put an availability uh, service level agreement capture on that application. And then you can define and quantify to your business and say, well, no, actually, the service was available for 99.999. If you want to go five nines, you can do and be brave. But um, uh, you can then actually quantify those, those details. So let me switch over to my um, my desktop again rich if you can just give me a shout when um when that's all good yes yeah, just loading at the moment excellent see you now brilliant so okay so what we'll do is we'll we'll flick over into our authoring group here and so we'll see the distributed applications so it really is a lot of the a lot of the stuff in, in Operations Manager um, is wizard-driven, which is really good news for the IT pro who doesn't um, want to get into um, uh, XML authoring and all of that. You can do 90% of the stuff you want straight out of the console. Of course, if you want to get fancy and get more detail in, then, then you can do and, and dig in to uh, custom management pack authoring, but that's a, that's a, whole, new, a whole new webcast, which... Uh, um, uh, People like Brian Wren and um, uh, have have done hours and hours and hours of of uh, webcasts on the Microsoft Virtual Academy, which I absolutely uh, recommend you go in and have a look at. Um, if you need me, Rich, to supply any links or anything, then I'll I'll supply that on uh, so people can follow that up. But it's a, a, an awesome resource um, to find out a lot on the uh, uh, on on SCOM and how to use it. So I'm going to give it the absolutely brilliantly name called Test Distribution. Muted. This is where I. And so this is one of the. So I created one earlier. So we just call it. Uh, so basically, what we want to do here is just sort of like divine exactly what our, our servers are that we're looking at. So our, our line of business. So what I'm going to say is I've got some servers in here which are store application services. It's from a management pack I'm trying to. Um, develop at the moment. So we just define the class. We want to say it's a Windows Server. We just look at the name and then say it's those three boys there. Let's have those. So they are our application servers. All right. So we're going to add that to a new component group. And we'll call that application servers. OK. Right. Say we've got a website. That is part of the um, so effectively what we want to do is we want to know about anything that happens on those application sites so I'm going to say oh let's have that website there okay this is obviously a completely fictitious distributed app but for the purposes on there so we're going to say website so let's be a little bit more there Oop. So we're going to say website as if. And then what I'm going to look for is, I don't know if you remember from before, the web transactions. We're going to use the ones for um, due to uh, the web transaction. Oh, sorry, web application test. So just going to say those two. Yes, I know it's not the same one, but um, for the purposes of this, demo then that works and so we'll say website active as you can see that there's actually two in there and that means I've got two nodes um, actually testing that website so if you had a distributed data center uh, environment what you could do is you could put maybe a couple on tests on 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 each um, on each data center so if you've got uh, virtual machines hosted in one data center and then the other you can effectively that proves that uh, the website is available from the, from those locations, and then if we wanted to get really um, um, fancy on this, let's say there's a database on there as well. Oop. Okay, and so let's just say that's the App Controller database, and so let's have a look. So that's the database. And again, exactly like um, uh, the website, uh, you can have active um, 
active tests into the database. So um, they're called synthetic transactions in um, uh, in, in SCOM speak, as it were, um, and you can do that across. Uh, um, TCP port recognition, um, uh, SQL, DB queries, anything you like. So, and then let's have a look for one last one there. Now, the one thing that I don't have is I don't have um, a SAN hidden in my home. I don't think my wife would appreciate the um, um, the bill, the electricity bill, if it was running. Uh, so, uh, I've uh, I've just got a, an an AS solution which I use to present off my my storage. So, but I'm going to call that my network devices okay and so very quickly you can see here I built up an idea of the application servers and all the um, programs that are running on there all the applications the a website presence passive and active database and then also the net, the um, uh, the network devices now that's going to take just a couple of seconds to save as I say I'm on a on a home lab at the moment um, so it does take a, a little while to um, uh, to, to throw in, but as that's um, as that's saving, um, the distributed applications. Um, as you can see when I was actually making and saving those change rooms, they're in what we call custom management packs. Um, all the management packs that you get from Microsoft and third-party vendors, they're all sealed, so you can't make any changes to them. So best practice as well is that for everything that you create, like this uh, distributed application, would be create a new management pack. Then if it all goes horribly wrong, you could just remove it, and you're not impacting anything else on, in your service. Um, so yes, the third-party management packs um, uh, the providers such as uh, Veeam for um, for VMware, and they do some Hyper-V additional hosting as well. But uh, I'll come on to the community management packs that are available for that. Um, you've got Comtrade for uh, 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 they've taken over a lot of the Citrix uh, monitoring. Uh, we've got HP, IBM, NetApp, Cisco, F5, Fujitsu. They all provide management packs for their products um, for integration with Operations Manager. I must stress, though, that all vendors are not created equally, and they're ultimately report responsible for the support around their, their products and their functionality of the management packs. And as you can probably guess, some are better than better than others. So immediately, what we can do is have a look at a diagrammatical view of that now we might not have all the health monitoring in place at the moment though no, because it, it does take time for it to um, to roll up but that will be there in a, in a minute or so but if we have a look underneath we can see immediately uh, the application servers database network devices because it's, it's really quite cool it'll go in and have a look at uh, what's monitored what's not monitored um, these are just um, uh, so from the database, it will go in and look at the primary um, sizes and the, the log files. These are the transactional tests, and then you've got your, oop, your, your, your website there. So I would assume at some point that's going to roll up and that's going to be unhealthy, probably because of these two boys here. So just to prove to you what health uh, root cause analysis is, Health Explorer. There we go. The 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 fictitious service that I'm running on here isn't running, okay? And so what we would do, because this is a, a creative one, I, I can't just start the um, the service up. But we would be able to go to that server and then um, uh, uh, and then remediate that situation, and then recalculate it, and it will go back to green, and everything will be happy. So if I just refresh that now, we'll see if the um, there we go. Some of the health monitoring, as you can see, is is starting to bubble up. Uh, not all of it, but um, that's just due to the magics of demos, I'm afraid. So right, I'm going to flick back over to my. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so but this right. Okay. Okay, then we should be back on yeah, the. That's good. There you go. Excellent. So. Um, to, so to go back and have a look at the community management packs, um, the third party ones, they're either free from the vendor um, or um, they're a paid for solution such as such as the Veeam one. They all offer different levels of functionality. The community management packs, um, there's a wealth of them um, that have been created by the SCOM admins and, and, and distributed. And the best of them, to me, and this is only my opinion, um, are but uh, the, in System Center Central. There are lots of other um, uh, uh, 
uh, sites, uh, but this is a recognized community site, and uh, obviously because they're crafted by individuals, they do come with caveats. So implement them in test environments first until you're happy with what they do and what the functionality is and any, over, any overrides so you don't get any nasty surprises in a production system. But packs that can be offered, um, such as enhanced PKI monitoring. So out of the box, the Windows management pack looks at the infrastructure of certificate services, make sure it's up, make sure the, the engines are running, et cetera, et cetera. It doesn't actually look at the certificates within the environment. This one will actually go through and pull out any certificates that aren't set to renew automatically um, and uh, uh, warn you when um, uh, they're coming up for renewal. Uh, enhanced Hyper-V monitoring, which in my uh, uh, humble opinion um, does actually actually compete quite competitively with the paid for Veeam Hyper-V management pack in the fact that it offers you a wealth of additional metrics uh, building upon the standard Hyper-V objects uh, that are monitored in in um, in, in uh, uh, operations manager, and then maintenance task management packs such as backing up ups, unsealed management packs, and effectively are ones that I use uh, on nearly every engagement because, to be quite honest, they just work. Um, and that's what we want as as SCOM admins. So, um, right. So, um, I'm going to just quickly flick back. Hopefully, all the um, stuff now will have um, uh, created. I just wanted to show you exactly what. Um, oh no, it's not question and answers yet. Please don't start. Um, I'm going to present back to now. Okay. So the one last thing is is that this test distributed application is all lovely and good. Let's say that it's a, it's a line of business application. What we want to do is provide a way to quantify to the business exactly that this, this service has been or has not been available for X amount of time. So test application SLA. And as you can see, a lot of this is wizard driven and it's, it's, it's really very useful. So if we look at test distributed application, we just pick it from the list, we say OK, and then what we want to do is we want to look at just the availability on it, um, and then we'll just put avail availability, there we go, I can spell, availability SLO, have a look at that, and then within, as you can see, within a couple of clicks, we've actually defined that service level. So. You can probably respect from a uh, from an enterprise solution. We've got full integration with SSRS, and uh, which is the SQL Server reporting services. So if you've got SQL capabilities within the house, they can go to town on that and pull out any uh, reports that you want. But what I'm introduced at the moment, because I'm a, an IT pro, I like to see pretty pictures. Um, and in the best, again. Um, uh, um, Blue Peter Way, I want to have a, a look at that SLA grant for me. So there's, they provide a nice one for us out of the box. So I'm just going to give it a very informative name called SLA. And again, just there we go. We just select it from the list, pop it in. Because I'm only interested over the last, it's, it's only been in existence a day. So let's just put it at as uh, 24 hours. I'm probably not going to get a good 99% here because I think it was. Uh, Going bad, so we shall see that once it um, comes up. These views sometimes are, as I say, just um, a little bit uh, uh, wonky sometimes. Sometimes it's just the operations, but there we are. It's all worked nicely. And lo and behold, look at that 100% availability. We'll wait till my um, monitors properly kick in and then I'll go and find out where the errors are. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to um, quickly go onto my other server. Lovely, okay. Right. So, as you would expect, um, uh, Operations Manager really does um, fit in with the enterprise model, and so we've got all the standard notification methods. So, um, uh, if you've got email, uh, uh, services within the environment, you can actually stack them up. Um, best practice, um, uh, if you're reporting on your exchange availability and if exchange goes down, how are you going to get um, uh, um, notified? You can actually stack them up in, in different areas. So if you've got two SMTP, even if it's just a simple SMTP um, uh, server, you can stack that up as a failure. So if the first one fails over, 
then it goes onto it and you still know about your email failures. Uh, you can go via SMS, uh, that does require a little bit more work. Um, uh, physical parks with a GSM modem is one solution, um, but as soon as you do that, um, you can actually send SMS messages um, uh, through it. Um, or uh, IM as well, so um, industry standards uh, uh, links um, 2013 or Skype for Business 2015 um, can integrate uh, nicely with, with that and then it just allows you to subscribe to whatever alerts that you want um, and then um, uh, and then uh, that alerts your technical teams or your management team or, or whoever you so wish. So then flicking back to the dashboards, um, you've got a whole swathe of dashboards which I haven't really got time to, to have a look into uh, or, or demonstrate properly here at the moment. I've got one which I want to show you which is the, the SQL one and as I said earlier the, there's particular teams that work very, very well together with the operations manager team and, and the SQL team seems to be one of those teams. Um, and whenever uh, they bring in a, a new feature into their management packs or the, the, the SCOM infrastructure, um, SQL tend to be the first to, to implement that um, uh, uh, within their management pack infrastructure. You've also got SharePoint and Visio integration as well. So you can link live state health diagrams to, um, uh, to in, within your current Visio. So what do I mean by that? Say you spent X amount of time producing a Visio diagram which has got all your servers uh, for a service plotted out, your network devices, um, websites, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What you can do is so long as they're monitored in SCOP and, uh, SCOM and you um, just install a very small little add-on onto your Visio professional uh, um, application sitting on your desktop, you can actually then pull um, uh, live state data directly out of the operations manager database and put that onto your Visio diagram. So that works very, very well for um, so like a, a big screen TV environment where you've got a local PC running off it. Um, though if you then integrate that with SharePoint, it effectively does exactly the same thing, but with SharePoint Enterprise, which is what the version you need for that, um, it basically allows you to put in a, a store credential and then access that data source directly. And so what that will allow you to do is visualize your, um, your dashboard solution through to you know, potentially non-SCOM uh, uh, admins or non-technical teams. So you'd make specific dashboards available, say maybe to your management team, uh, to be able to 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 get uh, um, uh, the 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 coverage and the visibility of the um, metrics that you should so need. Um, I'm just going to flick quite quickly over to the desktop again. I just want to show you the wonderful dashboard that SQL guys do. Apologies for um, it taking a little bit of time to, to render, but that's down to the performance on my machine rather than there. Uh, can you see that, guys, Rich? Yeah, I can see it's just, just working now. Yeah, I can see all those graphs. It's great. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> it is beautiful. Um, it's one of the things, if you want to get the SQL team, uh, buy in into Operations Manager, throw up a proof of concept, show them this, and they'll be battling down your door. You can do everything from here. From a SQL point of, of view, it gives you every single metric graphically. And if I had more instances here, you'd, you'd see that. You've also got another um, uh, way of doing it, which you look at it, turn it on its head and look at it from the database side of thing. And then that brings in free space, performance, and details. And you can do all your um, C, uh, DBCC checks and set the databases online, offline, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So as you can see, immensely powerful um, and really does give you that functionality. So that's um, the last bit of the demo from me. I'm going to switch back now into there. So coming on to the, the final slides. So really integration with the system center components. Okay. Um, DPM, first of all, Data Protection Manager. Um, what the integration with SCOM uh, does that for you, not only does it then monitor the DPM infrastructure, which is obviously very important uh, to make sure that your backups um, uh, infrastructure is working um, and your protection groups and, and, and all those infrastructure pieces of DPM itself, it integrates the central console. So what does that mean? The DPM administrators can do all their administrative day-to-day -day tasks for DPM within the SCOM cell console. So again, going back to that idea of a single pane of glass for the technical staff, it means they just don't have to open up another console that's going to kill their desktop, you know, um, and it just 
centralizes all the tools, all the system center tools in, into one. Um, then you've got virtual machine manager. There's masses of integration. There's actually a specific connector, which is going into the technical point here. But um, the it again, not only does it monitor the, the VMM or the virtual machine manager, infrastructure itself it gives an idea of the monitoring of the fabric and the VMs and the networks um, and everything in what the virtual machine manager management packs define there and to go one step further and this is a really cool bit you turn on the pro tip integration and then so based on defined criteria and monitoring supplied by your operations manager thresholds which are defined within operations manager and vmm it will automatically go and rebalance and remediate problems shift vms across and and load balance across your hosts all down to criteria that's been defined as yourselves uh, as as the data center admins um, also uh, what you can do is then bring an analysis services database into play normally hosted along with the operations manager SQL solution um, and then you can start leveraging some of the capacity um, uh, 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 reporting around your VMM and your storage that's that's assigned to your virtual machine uh, manager environment and the storage that's looked after it by that so uh, that's one other integration uh, which can done, be done um, penultimately service manager service manager is much much more than just a little uh, um, service compliant uh, service desk. Um, I'm not going to do it justice. My my colleague Joe Hodgkinson would would uh, shudder at this because uh, uh, it uh, is such a big product, uh, almost as big as oper operations manager. Um, it primarily it will also act as that data warehouse for all your data center, uh, data sources across your enterprise. So that will include Active Directory, uh, System Center Configuration Manager, Operations Manager, Virtual Machine Manager, and they all feed in. You can then also add in an HR or a finance database system if that's part of your requirement. And effectively what that does is flattens all the data into a standard data warehouse uh, architecture via uh, ETL, and then you can report uh, uh, across across all that data in a uniform matter really really good but where the that proper integration shines with operation manager and it sings and dances is that the services that we've just defined in that test distributed application we can actually lift and shift that into the service manager environment and then it's within our service desk solution and so then we can provide SLAs against the availability of that application and then also about the way that the service desk and the whole IT support um, is, is dealing with those potential issues around the service itself and get proper tracking and you, you take machines and it will suck up the machines that we've defined. So that store server one, two and three, that will automatically be included in the service ticket. And so alerts from the operations manager also can be sucked into service manager automatically to find again on a criteria and then allocated to appropriate teams where where automation of resolution is just simply not possible so um, it brings me back finally to orchestrator ironically one of the smallest components of the system center suite but to me it's one of those hidden gems orchestrator is formerly known as Apalis and is just properly recognized as an industry standard automation tool and it just keeps on getting better and better there's new versions of it as well which are um, to do with the uh, uh, Azure platform which is the SMA which is based around the same um, uh, architecture uh, on a loose basis um, but uh, more contained with uh, the PowerShell automation and the Azure um, PowerShell SDK. Um, but it's commonly known as the glue of System Center. And this is a troop because it can provide automation for every single component of System Center plus other um, um, uh, uh, technologies such as Active Directory and Exchange and file services. And um, it's a little bit like Lego. So the building blocks are really easy to get used to, but there's a learning curve if you want to build a scale model of the Taj Mahal, if you get what I mean. So in particular, Orchestrator can provide real visibility to the automation and auditing of those alerts generated within Operations Manager. And it enhances the elegance and the, the administrative effort of that problem resolution. So what do I mean? 
I'm not talking rubbish, I promise you. So I'll give you a scenario. A service keeps on failing on a box that causes that line of business application to lose availability. Say it's the server service. Pretty bad one because that will block any um, uh, SMB share or NetBio share uh, visibility on that box. So solution one, operator sees the alert in operations console views it and then from the link provided on the on his alert he restarts the service he then phones up the service manager um, team gets the or sends a, uh, an email to them gets a, uh, an alert raised and then is closed second one the operator gets the email alert opens up the web console restarts the service from the link provided and then the corresponding manager alert is then closed automatically because we put a, um, a, a connector in place lovely excellent solution three now this is where I like it is that the alert is captured by orchestrator it creates a ticket within service manager for the instant restarts the service automatically updates the service um, ticket then closes the service manager ticket and emails the operator to summarize what's been done. As you can see, that's problem resolution and automation at its best and using three tools, operations manager, service manager, and the wonderful little orchestrator. Um, and as you can see, orchestrator provides the, the glue and then using service manager provides the, um, the audit trail um, for, for those remediated tasks. Um, right, okay, I think that's me right at the end of, of there. I think I'm within time, Rich. Um, well, you're a little bit over, but we'll forgive you. We'll forgive you, David, for that excellent presentation and demonstration. No problem. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Welcome. So I guess that leaves us to questions and answers. So um, if we unmute everyone, that's probably the way to go. Uh, Just bear with us while I unmute everyone. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, please do speak up. And now's your chance. Um, you know, Damien will answer any questions that you put forward. Within reason. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were going to, is this Mike Godsave here? Oh, hi, um, Mike. You, hi. Uh, you were going to give us some links to the tutorials on the Microsoft website? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, um, I'll uh, get those links together and then send them to Molly. Uh, Molly, I think you're probably going to send out a, a feedback email or something like that. Is that right? So we can get those links included in that. Yeah, cool? I'll be sending out an email um, when the actual webcast is on YouTube, and I'll have all of the links Lovely. there for you. Okay, right. is that all right, Mike? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, it's, those MVA courses are really, really, really good, and they're at different couple of levels as well. Um, I'll include some of the TechNet documentation as well, um, uh, the links to that, which are are really good. But between those two resources, you can't go wrong. So, right, thank you. No problem, Mike. Any, anyone else brave enough to uh, pose a question? Uh, yeah, um, this is Paul Wheatcroft from Clarks. Hi, Paul. Oh, How hi, you Paul. Doing, guys? Um, we've engaged with you guys about putting in SCOM um, this year, and uh, this will be the third iteration of putting in SCOM. Um, yep. I'm old school, so I refer to it as SCOM. Good man. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what we've done before is we've approached this with no noise coming out and then wondering what we need to figure out to monitor. Yeah. And we've also done it the reverse, where we've gone in with all noise and then thought, well, we'll filter out what we decide we don't need. Yeah. Both of which approaches, in my opinion, have failed. Yeah. So what we want to do with this next try, as it were, is to engage with you guys and, and look at, at integrating what you deem to be best practice. So I guess yep. my question is, is that a reasonable ask? Uh, yes, well, it would be actually myself doing it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, right yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the way that we'll we'll approach that uh, is put in the, um, uh, I think that there's some stuff in the HLD and the LLD. Um, we, without going into uh, confidential de uh, detail, but um, we're going to, uh, we, the, the approach to that is um, 
uh, slow implementation of management packs um, and careful and considerated uh, uh, implementation. Then right. it's looking through then the guide at which metrics are particular and poignant to yourself. Um, and effectively, it's a triage exercise um, uh, once the agents are in. And then so you put all your agents in, then you introduce management packs in a, a control fashion. Sure. Um, in, and then by that way, you then um, effectively are left with uh, information uh, that, that's coming through. The problem with doing it, denying all, is that you obviously can Don't potentially know. miss yeah. lots. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, and, and I think from our point of view, it's about understanding what, what almost like a, a bare bones standard installation is. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because, because if, if nothing else and we didn't expand from that, at least that's better than we've currently got. Yeah, totally agree. Well, I'll look forward to working with you on that one. Yes, so, you too, Damien. Brilliant. Thank you. Has anyone else got any questions? Okay, I think, is anyone, are you going to say something, Paul? You look like you're going to say something. Uh, no, I was probably just breathing too heavily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's probably, um, one thing to know is that we are going to run a series of webcasts around um, SCOM. So we'll get into, you know, we do deeper dive on certain areas such as uh, uh, management pack authoring that kind of stuff and um, throughout the series but we'll, we'll publish more information about that as it develops um, so watch this space great stuff and obviously if you if you would like to um, pose any questions offline then please do email us inquiries at visual.com um, or make contact with us directly and um, we'll, we'll, we'll um, go through your requirements Okay, so. ice cream. Yeah, sounds like the ice cream van's turned <laughs> yeah, up. So sorry, yeah, sorry, Perfect right. timing for you. Yeah. <laughs> right, I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you found that useful. Yes, thank you. Good. Take care. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.